we looked at one particular problem that you can solve by mapping it to an Ising model. This was a supervised problem, and it's very difficult to be competitive with supervised models on classical computers, because that's exactly where deep learning excels at. And a sounding point would be for quantum machine learning is that you can solve problems which remain hard in machine learning. So one of these is unsupervised learning. So deep learning and many other machine learning approaches have been making advances, but it remains a difficult problem. So what happens here is that we are given a couple of points in some high dimensional space, but we do not get any prior information about you know, whether they belong to a certain class or how they cluster in this, in this structure. So for instance, we have to figure out what the labels would be and how we would assign those labels. This is a discriminative unsupervised learning problem. And uh, we can also ask the question, what's the distribution of these points? That can we generate new points on this high dimensional manifold? That would be a generative problem. So let's look at clustering in this lecture. So in clustering, you have these high dimensional points, and you want, want to identify these, these clumps of points that somehow belong together. So if there's a nice separation, and a very simple learning algorithm called k-means can identify these clusters. So in k-means, you identify some center point of these locations, and then you assign clusters based on the, on the proximity to this central point. This idea breaks down where the density matters. So for instance, in this case, k-means clustering would assign these points to the green cluster, which is not correct. So what you could do instead, you can follow the density and assign points to the same cluster if they're connected in some topological way. And same thing for these, these green, green dots. So that, that, that's density-based clustering. So there are a couple of ways of doing it, and there's no clear winner. So here's, here's one way of doing it by a quantum computer. We can think about calculating the gram matrix, the distance between every single point in the sample that we are given. So we fill this gram matrix with the distances between individual points. This is a symmetric matrix because the distance function is symmetric. Now, if you have the gram matrix, that actually defines a weighted graph. So the points of the graph, a graph will be the data instances, so we can label them by the data instances, and the edges connecting them will be weighted by the corresponding distance between the, between the points. And now we can ask, OK, so what's the highest value of a cut going through this graph? So we wanna, want to separate this graph in, in two in a way that the value of this cut is maximal. So that would uh, identify these two maximally separate clusters that we are actually looking for, looking the, the overall global topology of the graph, as opposed to some local heuristic. So we can do that. So say this part of the graph is called V1, so everything on this side of the, of the cut is V1, and this is V2. Then the value of the cut is defined by the, uh, by the distances that cross the cut. So this will be a distance between all the points that lie on the two sides of the cut. So I'm, I'm going to call this as a wij value. So we can expand the same thing in the following form. So imagine that you have values on the same side of the graph. So if, now let's define a sigma i value as minus 1 if the corresponding xi point is in v1, so in this, this side of the partition. And it's going to be plus 1 if the, the point is in v2. So if, if you have something on the same side and you calculate the product of this, as I did here, that's going to give you a plus 1. So that's going to cancel out in this equation. So it's, it's actually not going to, uh, to matter at all. So that looks good. So these, these two look equal in that sense. And if they belong to two separate sides, then they will have a negative value. So they will add, and it's a symmetric matrix, so overall you have to normalize with 4. So 
this gives you the, the cost of the cut and this is what you want to maximize. And now when you look at it, this is exactly an Ising model. Because here you have your spin variables taking plus from minus from uh, values. Here you have the coupling strength and you have some constant offset. And that's it. Now you can use quantum annealing or QAOA or any other quantum optimization uh, subroutine that, that you have available and solve this problem.